It's your uh, decision. You can have uh, an arrangement with uh, a different arrangement with all the partners if you want. I think. I'm quite sure. Because you receive, you have the, the, the contract agreement is between you and the EACEA, bet between the applicant and the EACEA. Yes. For example, um, let's say let's say that this is the let's say that is the two years. Okay. And you have uh, one work package here, uh, work package there, and you have a work package starting only on the second year. Well, you don't need to, to send the money to this guy, but the money he needs, for example, for the meeting, the trips, the travel assistance. But maybe he doesn't need the money for uh, the other activities he's responsible for. Eventually. But you can also send, oh, if it was Synergia here, well, I'd get the money when you, knew you need it, use it. Send me the reports, send, send me the invoices, it depends. It's on you. Could the have, uh, have uh, all the budget at the start of the project? No. Well, I don't know uh, precisely the arrangements because I never uh, applied as an applicant, but I'm a partner. But the, um, the contract agreement is available. You can look at it. And on the tips that I had on the conf conferences, you understand that uh, well, most of the time you ask to provide a bank guarantee. And then, according to the topic of the project, according to the structure of the project, I think you can uh, have, uh, I, I think it's not strict. It's not something uh, um, you receive apart. Uh, I don't know exactly the, the details of the arrangement, but um, it's, uh, it's part of the uh, contract uh, grant agreement that we'll see, uh, by the way, tomorrow. So, uh, management of the money, and staff cost versus uh, dimension. It means, basically, the, um, uh, how are you uh, going to organize the, the budget on the staff according to dimension, to the, to the, the, yeah, the dimension of the work they are going to, to do. If, for example, uh, one partner has to do all the training, course, preparation alone, I mean, it's normal that he will receive a bigger budget than another one, for example. It's all kind of logics. Um, this analytical accountancy is a suggestion. You're not forced to do it, but, I mean, even small scale project, you should go analytical. I don't know if you're familiar with analytical. Analytical means uh, you have, for example, uh, your staff work eight hours a day, and your staff is doing task one, two, three. An analytical is much more than that. Obviously, I'm trying to simplify. So here, he'll, he'll use or either a software or a timesheet, and he will put two hours, three hours. This is analytical. So at the end of the month, your uh, accountant will be able to tell you that your staff have been working 40 hours during the month on this task, which lead to this cost. This is analytical. Because if not, well, at the end of the month, well, you just have the salary and you don't really know exactly. He was there, he worked, but you don't know exactly 
where, how, and all this, this detail. So go analytical. This is actually part of the uh, standards of quality management. Good news tomorrow. OK. You know the drill, question and answers. Are you lost or is it okay? Is there something you want you want me to come to to back up or no? Let's see. Um, I'm thinking what's best now to do. It's 12. <coughs> I'm uh, one hour late. So I'm trying to understand. Uh, anyway, since we are going to work on the doc document and activities, I can uh, organize myself to... Um, Okay, I'll, I'll show you now, quickly, uh, part E and F. The title of part E and F is Impact, Dissemination and Exploitation and Sustainability. But I will be able to address this situation uh, while we're looking at part G, and I will come back to it also tomorrow during the budget. So, don't worry, we will, we will tackle that uh, in a very uh, efficient way. But I want to show you, and part F is, is the action or program specific information that we eventually, we actually um, uh, been uh, talking about uh, yesterday and the day before. So these are obviously important parts, but uh, it will be easy for me to, to get back to in order to... Um, so this part is also uh, quite heavy. And in my program, I had only uh, one hour to, to deal with. Maybe this afternoon we'll, we'll go back to it instead of one activity or instead of the review, so no problem. OK, so. C'est le 4-4. On, on part E, just this, uh, this slide and this uh, aspect of sustainability. Um, in the part E, what they ask precisely is uh, you're supposed to give here a good idea of the impact uh, that your project will have on your target group, on your own partners' activities and organization and all that stuff. Then you have the dissemination of this uh, project um, uh, at the European level and also the exploitation. Exploitation means uh, you, will, you will be able with this uh, project 
to make possible for other organizations that was, were not involved in the project to use the results, the outcomes of your project. Okay? This is what we call exploitation. And exploitation is linked to valorization. You give value to your projects beyond its own existence. Even after the, the project is finished, it's still uh, useful. It still has a life. Okay, so sustainability is uh, something very important to understand. How will the impact of this project be sustained beyond after its lifetime? How will the result be mainstreamed, distributed, broadcasted, and multiplied in the sector of activity? Okay, and, and this part is very important because you want your project you want your project, can you see that? You want your project to um, not to stop this is me talking to you. This is not what you're supposed to, uh, to do by the book. What I propose to you is to, you're not going to write here, we are going to go on a next step after this project. You're not going to do that. What you're going to do is that you are going to explore the possibility within the duration of the project to go on another step. You mention it. You don't say you're going to do it. You mention the eventuality, the possibility. You will try to make it happen. And I'm saying that because whatever you write is taken for granted by the European, the, the, the EACEA. If you say something you're going to do, do it. Because if you don't do it at the evaluation uh, stage, you lose points. OK? So I suggest that you, you, uh, you, uh, you, you explain in a subtle way that you can eventually say that uh, one person of each partner's uh, organization, and be realistic because organization, you know, sometimes they live and dead, um, and die, sorry, they live and die. So be realistic. You see, yeah, we, we plan to uh, make possible that one person will be the contact in our organization, and on the web platform, there will be uh, a possibility for people to to, um, to contact the organization. I managed to get in contact inclusively with the project um, uh, Global Education Without Borders, thanks to that website, name of the persons, and emails. And I'm suggesting to build a project on my own based on their uh, outcomes. Okay? So, you also want, in, by sustainable, you mean that you, in, you, you bring to your project as many as stakeholders, meaning people who are linked to the field you addressing in your project. Business activity. Why not think about the spin-off of your project? Why not? Your project is not for profit. You don't make any money of the project. But you can, from the project, bring an idea of a spin-off which will be um, uh, 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 very valuable for the purpose of the project. It's possible. Yeah, micro. About this, uh, if uh, my project is, um, for example, uh, on employability or entrepreneurship, 
and uh, I want to create a spin-off uh, as a sustainability. Uh, can I create an internal call uh, in my project to found uh, the startup of spin-off? I'm not sure I, I understood, sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, my project, my um, idea is about entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, yeah. Ent mm -hmm. I would uh, have a spin-off from you my mean, project. Yeah. Um, creation of new um, enterprises. Could I um, plan in my project uh, a call in, a, in the activities of my project, a call to, find, to found uh, this uh, new startup to, well, to give uh, sustainability? The, the definition of the, the use of the grant is you're not al allowed to use the grant to, let's say, to, uh, to make profit of it. I think it's a bit um, unclear, but you're not allowed or you're not supposed to use the money to build your project. You can, you can eventually use the results of the project. For example, if, if you wouldn't uh, uh, use the money to pay a trip to go to uh, Norway to, to make a deal for the, the spin-off. You see, you use the money to go to Norway to do some kind of a deal to create an enterprise. But if within your project you create a platform and you invite a call and you invite uh, people, is that right? To, to get to the platform, to use the platform, in order to work on, on possible spin-offs. Well, the platform itself can be a result of the project, an outcome. Uh, isn't my idea. Uh, no. In um, Puglia, we have uh, some uh, regional programs uh, to found uh, a startup of uh, vulnerable uh, people. If my project is uh, about entrepreneurship of uh, vulnerable people, could I found uh, with uh, um, uh, a call for my target groups uh, uh, their startup? No. No. I don't think so. Because I... in some European programs, uh, I could do it. Yeah, but you know, this is a very pertinent question, a very specific question that maybe uh, uh, you and I could address at the help desk. I think the definition is you can't use the money for all the things that the purpose of the project. So why not to think if the purpose of the project is to create companies as an outcome, why not? I feel okay with that, but um, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, on, system, on sustainability, uh, you will see that they talking about the situation during the project and after the project. During the project means how are you going to make possible the outreach of the project, okay? To, to be able to make it uh, known and to create basis for its progress. Um, Oh, that's uh, something really special from uh, a structured, uh, everybody know what's a network, okay? It's a web of contacts. You have different contacts. When, what I mean by structured network, it means on my LinkedIn account, I have many people. But believe me, I have 58 people right now that are, for me, structural important because they are influential and it's a win-win uh, networking they ask me things that uh, they need I answer I give it's a sharing situation okay so to make things sustainable you have you, you're not an island you have to work with people but try to work with people who do okay Hey, can you provide me an address? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll think about that. No, they do. Yeah. 
No, actually, it's, it's, you, you, you create a structured network to use it. For example, you have this, um, this publication on the situation on immigration in, 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 in your project. And the people in your structured network receive this information and you ask them to, to disseminate it. These people will, for example, take a day in their organization and invite their usual partners locally for a two hours conference. And during this conference, they will tell everybody what you're, going, you, you're doing in your project. This is a structured network. It, the, the, the publication, the information goes to a mailbox, the mailbox to a person, the person to an event. This is for me a structured network. People ask me to organize things in Portugal to disseminate. I do it. And I do it with uh, uh, as many um, influential people as possible such as uh, Secretary of State uh, of uh, the sport activities. Well, it can be both, actually. In this case, I propose to uh, a partner to create a work package on this. Because uh, I think it's... Uh, the, the, the network for dissemination exploitation is part of projects, it's obvious. But I think it's so important that it can be a uh, work package in itself. You can separate the activities linked to that. But it's not mandatory. Basically, most of the time, the, the, the networking is part of the exploitation dissemination work package. Quite obvious. You can do it too. Yeah, I have. I have. I explained my 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 LinkedIn network exists already. I can use it already. No cost. Talking about the budget, I mean, if I put this voice uh, into the activity description, uh, description, it yeah? can be too. Uh, uh, then I have to consider it like a cost. Uh, you if can, I put into if, my if you, if you decide that in your project you are going to build a structured network specifically for that. Mm -hmm. uh, if I use the extent, uh, the, um, like that, like your example, uh, your uh, LinkedIn network. I don't know. Uh, it's not an activity. It's uh, uh, uh That's what I say. You can do both. You know, one project uh, work package dissemination, and the structured network is there. No cost or costs are linked to. Or another project, you can separate work package and work package. And the reason why I suggest, repeat, suggest to start thinking about structured network is because of what's going on with this evolution to Erasmus for all. Erasmus for All are addressing more and more the skills, uh, uh, sector skills alliance situation. The skills by sectors. And by eventually creating work, work package and on structured network, what you are creating also somehow is a different level I really like to write and to spend paper, huh? is
you create two dimensions, two levels, multi-stakeholders, all stakeholders involved in your situation, or single stakeholders. Single stakeholders, for example, all the teachers, just the teachers, just the trainers only. Not the political, not the researchers, just the, the guys, practitioners and VET, vocational education training. Multi-stakeholder means, okay, you consider the guys working in the education field, the policy makers linked to the education field, the researchers working to the education field, the social partners, this is multi. And at that level, what you're creating also, it's called communities of practice. These notions are notions you should start to integrate a bit also because this is, I believe, this is me talking, huh? uh, a kind of a transition, okay? What I believe that I've been done on the past year, past years, that a lot of projects have been happening. Okay? All these projects, hundreds of projects, okay? But maybe, I say maybe, there is a lack here, a, a problem that is no transversal uh, links. So there's all trains going to the tracks, but there's no Okay, and I, I believe that Erasmus for All, with this education framework, was built under this constatation, this understanding of, but this is my interpretation. Yeah, I wanted to, to focus a bit of, um, on the system, sustainability before going to part G. Uh, we'll start part G before lunch, and I will follow part G in the afternoon. Okay? This is another heavy thing, you know. Um, okay. Part G of the application. This is part G of the application. Work plan and work packages. Uh, I, will, I will show you later how you, you know. Here, as in the part C description of organization, you have to copy paste also because you, have on, you don't have only one work package. You have, so you will have uh, different, uh, several G1. And each work package have deliverables. Deliverables are tangible results of the activities. And you will have maybe three, four, five deliverables in one work package. And also, last but not least, you'll have the organization of the work package within the partnership. And you will have also to explain how the expenditures, expenditures mean the, what you spend, how you put the costs, and the work packages. So this is a really tricky part. At this moment, you'll have to have your uh, budget quite clear, obviously. So that's why my suggestion on building this application is you go through G1, G2, eventually G3, but not necessarily. You go back to your Excel file tab, you finish it, you have it really structured, and then you go back here. You can use this table here as a draft preparation for the Excel table, 
and back and forth until you match because the Excel table will tell you what you're doing right or wrong because of the message. Isn't you spending too much money on this one or this? So it's, it's not a, I write here, I write there. It's done. No, you have to, I mean, unless you're, which I'm not. Um, okay, this is part G. And I, I, I try to, to summarize in a funny way this part G because uh, it's really a structural and, and heavy one. So these guys won the gold medal, Italian Excel fencing, women. Um, and you know, this part G is all about that. You and your partners are a team. You and your partners know exactly what to do, when, so there is a strategy, there is a tactic, and you really are together. It's not you building the, the budget for the others. Yeah, I give you that, I give you, no, no, no. You discuss it. I need this. Oh yeah, you need this, but the other need this too. You, you are part of a, a conversation. Okay, so that's why I used uh, this image. So in this session, we will understand the same thing, how it works, and more specifically, the structure, basic rules, the method and organization of writing and building this part, and the consistency. This is, this is something uh, it, it have to make sense between what you're going to put on the budget uh, part and what you're writing in the document. It's tricky because um, when you look at the budget, you look at numbers. When you're writing, you're explaining what you're going to do. So you have to make a connection and the connection, the link between the table, um, one of the link between the, the Excel table and the Word document is this. Sorry? Oh yeah, uh, I'll come to that in, uh, in the, but I can mention it right away. Category, this is mentioned in the guides Category 1 is the management level. Uh, category 2 is the teacher, trainers, trainers, uh, research, researchers level. It's linked to a, a value of salaries. Sorry? You find this information on documents and it, more precisely on the guides, guide, guide part 1, guide part 2A, 2B, okay? And it's linked to the, um, it's linked to the OS, OSCD, uh, it's, it's kind of an international, um, let me tell you exactly the, uh, so you have it here. No, I don't, but I will tell you uh, later. It's, it's linked to an uh, international standard of, um, of uh, definition of category. Okay, you have it actually, maybe I can find it quickly if you, good. ISCO, that's ISCO. ISCO. International Standard Classification of Occupations. This is the, 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 the standards you, they use for this, okay? And there is a different uh, uh, standard for third, third countries, just for you to know. And this is available uh, in this uh, event, okay? 
So, work packages, basics. A work package is a group of activities that will lead to eventually to deliverables, to, to, to things to be used, such as, for example, manual, such as a product, whatever. And a work package is a, a group of activities which are designed to do a function. Okay? Uh, so, one of the well-known work package on project management is the management itself. So let's say it would be a management uh, work package one. And obviously, the, the management work package starts from the beginning to the end. It's quite obvious. OK, until now? You don't have to worry because all this information will be available to you, okay? Make available to you. Then you have the quality management. Here you have the option to integrate the quality management within the management or to separate the two work packages. Decide. I mean, the projects, projects are a variety of, 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 of design. And also you don't want to be too much uh, to give too much separation of things sometimes sometimes it doesn't make sense to separate things sometimes it makes sense if for example uh, I'm working on this uh, project uh, key activity 4 which is building uh, an assessment soft not software but uh, an assessment tool for trainings uh, which uh, address the situation the, the soft skills training okay so this, is, this will be a tool for organizations to assess their training in this field to understand if their training is well built, if it's a good quality. It makes sense in, in, in the project, it made sense to create a work package and quality manual. You understand? Again, what I'm showing you is not what you have to do. It's to give you an idea of what we are talking about and what you should plan within your projects. Okay? There are a variety of work packages, but I'm, address, I'm, I'm showing you here the main, the basics work packages. Quality. And obviously this work package uh, as an information, this is let's say the start of the project and the end is the, the end of the project, the top Part is the end of the project. That's why there is this kind of uh, direction uh, situation. You have then also my structural networking that you can separate or not, but I believe that's uh, something to consider in the future. And one of the first things you would do at the beginning of your project is to create a work package, if necessary, if applicable, that uh, tackle the situation of mapping, of uh, gathering information on what you're going to, to work on. Obviously, before you start at your initiating part of the project, you did that. You did a lot of that already. But you, don't, you didn't, you didn't uh, do it in a way that you involve so many costs. I mean, you have a good idea because you've been uh, talking to your partners, because you've been experiencing the situation, because you have skills, you have been participating in events, in whatever, okay? But at that stage, you will consider the possibility to go deeper. After that, Imagine that uh, this example is, for example, in, a, in a, a case of building a training course or building a pedagogical method. So you will have a work package, for example, who, which will um, address the conceptual aspect of the training course. Okay, you will have a partner who will design 
the course, the training course, because there are experts in pedagogy, for example. Okay? Another, another example linked to this work package is a pilot testing work package, where you, the task and the responsibility of the partner will be to pilot test this training course. And in this work package, you can also have all the partners involved in pilot testing in their country. It's all part of the same work package. Okay? No question? Obviously, when this is done, another work package can be... When, when, when you're sure that uh, you have something to, to use, you can start thinking about disseminating. Hey, guys, we're working on this situation. Know that. Follow our progress. You can start dissemination at this point. It's always interesting because then you can eventually get support, get uh, expert involved, get a complement of information, uh, cross-verify information. Okay? You don't start dissemination when it's uh, one month to close the project. Doesn't make sense. In my opinion. After this part, you can have uh, exploitation, validation. Exploitation means besides your partners, you have other organizations working with your partnership or connected with your organizations which are using also this training course and testing also. So you have a wider uh, approach of the testing. And after, uh, let's say, a year and a half, you come to something really good. It works. People before the training course improve whatever they, they have to improve within your training course, 40%, 50%. They really get it. You validate. So you have a work package proving by the results, for example, of the evaluations, that it, it's working. People enter before with one level and get out of the training course with another level in this field. Then at this point, you will have somehow to produce uh, a manual, a book, a video, video, uh, something, eventually. This work package of production, maybe you can, you can integrate with the validation. I mean, you have the choice to, to organize the work packages the way you want. But it might be interesting to make the production of the material of everything in one work package. It can be interesting. And after that, you have eventually, oh, don't, re don't forget, sorry, don't forget that while this is happening, this is also happening. Okay? When you when you are at the exploitation level, you are dissemination, dissemination. Uh, you are making the dis dissemination, right? When you are you are at the um, validation status, you are disseminating too. Okay, when you're producing your material, uh, at this point maybe you have a website, uh, you, the first pages of your website. You don't have, for example, the page that explains all the details of the manuals, but at this stage, you already have a website um, accessible. Okay? This development plan is uh, something personal also. I mean, when I say personal, maybe it, uh, I didn't check it in with Google, my superhero, but I think this is very important to have 
either a work package on that or included with the dissemination plan or included with the management plan uh, work package because you want your project to have a second life okay you're not to the nirvana yet you need more lives all right I think this is something to think about maybe not in a work package but definitely you have to think about okay what's next what's next with me what's next with other things question and answers hey not bad I have 10 minutes. Maybe uh, it's better to show you this for the questions and answers. Uh, after lunch, we're going through the document itself. We'll look at the document and you, you will... This is the picture. Okay. No questions? One question? Give me one question. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> let me show you then quickly. Then before running out of the room. You see how you explain how you describe a G1 you will put here the title of the work package management for example dissemination whatever here you'll have to select oh sorry you have to select which kind of activity it's linked to the these options are associated to options you have in the excel table either when you start the excel table budget file you have a first tab uh, which is the timetable and you will have to link the duration of the work packages with the uh, content, the, uh, the purpose of the work package. So these are linked. So you will choose here for a management, management. If here it's, for example, concept, conceptual design of the training course, this is implementation. This is executing the, the project. If it's linked to quality, quality, etc. So you see why I insist on quality. Then you will have uh, the you have you will have the quality as a deliverable. Personally, I prefer to create a work package on quality manual on the quality because it's clearer for me. I think quality management have nothing to do with management but have a lot of things to do with management but quality management is something really special but so if you decide to to manage with quality you have the the management as g1 and actually here you will explain that my quality management is within my management and you will have as a deliverable, deliverable number three, quality procedures guidelines. So back to the uh, definition. So you select your option. When it starts, when it ends. So how many months? And here, I don't think they do that on purpose, but you have to put a, a consistency here. It must be exactly what you're going to write in the table. 
If you say that your management work package starts at uh, month number four and ends at month number 18, and in the Excel file you say that the management work package starts at month one and ends at month 24, are you in the same planet? Maybe not. Consistency. I mean, if you do that already in the Excel table, why ask here? Hmm. They want to know that you're working in uh, consistency. Okay, uh, so here you describe 3,000. It's not a big deal, but it's important. And, uh, well, it's better to see the deliverable after uh, our belly is a bit filled in because then I will not be able to start so to stop so so soon okay thank you very much for your patience and uh, for your tranquility also <laughs> okay um, <clears throat> I, I propose to uh, hello I'm here people hello teens yeah I'm speaking uh, do you want to do something important you have to say? Please? Yes. Share with us. <laughs> ah, okay. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I would like to uh, come back to the um, part G this morning because we didn't have time to, to see... Uh, some, some aspect of the uh, preparation. So let's come back to this. Even if the work packages that will be part of the project are not this one, you understand that there are different groups of activities which are part of one work package and each work package build the work plan. Okay? This is the logic. Work plan. Work packages which are built by tasks or um, activities and some some tasks will lead to deliverables okay this is the structure work plan work packages tasks deliverables and obviously you will see that um, as uh, Cinzia said very well, each task is linked to money. Which means that each deliverable will cost money, 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 budget. So there is a direct link between the work packages and the budget, because the work packages are made of hours of staff, cost of equipment, cost of travel and subsistence, cost of subcontracting. All that will be part of the uh, work plan. So, if we look to this mouse don't like me she refused to obey to me so looking at the uh, part G you remember we uh, understood we, we saw how uh,
Okay, you remember that? Work package title. Uh, at this point, um, I use the example of uh, management. Let me show you, uh, do I have it here? I think yes. Just to show you another practical example. Okay. This is an example on a very concrete work package I've been working with, and I tried to describe the work package that I want to propose to my partners, which is structured networking. For me, this structured networking is part of the management because it will be used also at managerial level to organize. Because I understand, for me, my structured uh, proposal, a network proposal, I have two levels an internal level between the partners and an external level with associated partner of the project that are out of the project and other bodies. So two levels, internal, external. So because of the internal level, it's part of the management. This is my explanation of my proposal, of my idea. So that's the way you, when you create your work packages, you will have your own interpretation and idea of what you're going to explain. So it's part of the dissemination because it will be used at the external level to disseminate, okay? So that's why I picked these two options. Describe it into the... Yeah. Remember, this is, this is me writing a, a, a work package. This is not how you have to, to, this is not indication from the European Commission, the uh, agency. This is me using an example on one thing I'm working on. And to tell, to tell that you're perfectly right, what's your name? Alessandra. Alessandra, here is the explanation that you just said, and you're right. You see? It's a working tool and operational framework managed by the WP leader, the leader of this work package, um, at two levels. Internal level, the consortium, and external level, a broadened group of stakeholders in the field addressed by the project and representatives bodies of the world of work at EU level. Two levels. It means that from the beginning, in my opinion, with this project, I think it's pertinent to start networking, to start building the communication, the future platform which we'll, the project will use to communicate the project and all that stuff from the start at the managerial level, but I propose to separate the work package in order to put 
specific tasks and um, uh, uh, activities linked to it. And you will understand why. By the way, take a minute to see how I write. You see, I wrote, I wrote this paragraph and I said, this is 518 characters. This zero here is an indicator for my partner that before that, I didn't write anything. So at that point, it's 518. Then I write the specific objectives of this work package. And I reach 966 characters in this paragraph, which, which when added to the first paragraph, gives you 1,482 characters, and so on. And Obviously, I'm overload. I have 200 and something characters to, to, to. But I, at this point, I propose the, the, the writing of the work package. So I've already been working on the, um, the quantity of characters. But I let my partner decide which part is more important and which part should be skipped. Okay, and you will see. I will show you later how I work on the this description of the work packages. This is not from me. This is something I learned. By the way, a uh, conversation we had that the coffee, the coffee place machine in places is so beautiful. You. So uh, what I use to design my work package is from Adrian. He is a German. We've been talking about intercultural learning. And uh, I, I really like the way he structured the work package design. So just for you to have an idea how I organize this uh, description of work package, I have first a sentence, which is global, what is going to, 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 to be. Then I describe specific objectives. really specific objectives, objective A, objective B, OK? Then I have global objectives. So I am specific. It's, now it's the contrary. I'm specific. I go a bit more global. This is my way. It's not the way. In this global objective, I, I explained that there is a impact beyond the own work package. So I, I kind of um, uh, uh, link this work package to the rest of the, the project. And at one point, after exp explaining uh, in, in details, I use very clear example of what I mean by external level and internal level. For example, I mentioned that at external level, specific target groups are the international institutions such as the ILO. I name it. And I'm not lying. Mrs. Todorova, she's from the ILO. I can, I can call her now, but I mean, I'm in contact with this person. Uh, government representatives, such as the Council of Europe. I'm in contact with Mr. Robert, uh, I don't remember his name exactly. He's in Lisbon. The Council of Europe uh, head office is in Lisbon. And I've been in a Congress two months ago, and I can prove it. It means something, what I'm writing. Um, well, and then you have other, uh, other description of, of people I'm including in this external level. Uh, these guys from the Global Action Foundation. I'm in contact with them in a project with the global education situation. Local and regional public authority authorities meaning my juntas de freguesias, meaning the uh, local of authority of my neighborhood. I, I do some volunteering for, uh, for them on weekends, or sometimes when, when I'm available. 
civil society organizations, vocational education and training practitioners, scholars and researchers, representative of the, you know, I'm very specific. This probably will be the four, 451 characters paragraph I will to match the 3,000 maximum. Because I don't maybe need to be so... I can just mention civil society organization and, get, and skip this. Okay? It's no, no big deal. Okay. At one point, I'm defining the activities of the work package. I'm saying what it is. And after that, I start explaining some details, which, has, for which is, for example, the operational fra framework of this work package, how it works, Colla collaborative interaction among partners and with targeted, targeted stakeholders, supported by flexible I'm reading this. Flexible and informal communication. What I'm saying the, here is I'm just saying that I will communicate with people and, and engage with people and bring people to my world and ask them to see um, interest in what I'm doing so that they might influence. Okay? Structured a network. A network is Facebook. Oh, we're talking about things. Maybe sometimes it's structural because you can, you, can, you can sell your products by Facebook's today, Facebook today. A structured network is something that will effectively bring something tangible, make things happen within your activity. For example, if I'm uh, very well with someone in the setup institution, which is the operational arm, development arm of um, vocational education and training of the, um, the, the, um, this uh, education uh, department. Maybe um, I can be invited to have a small conference with a group of people working in the field of my project to bring an information on a good practice that I've been using in my project. For example, there are so many examples. Uh, the second point that I mentioned in this work package is the expected result globally of this work package. What do I expect to, to build with this? But anyway, it will be explained in, in details with the deliverables, but sometimes the deliver deliverables are not... Sometimes you have a result, but you don't know exactly what happened here. To So I give a glance there. I have 3,000 characters anyway to use if it's pertinent. Okay? So that's, that's the structure of the... Uh, that's an example of... Um, we'll get back to that. Salute. I don't know how to say in Italian. Salute. 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 Like when you drink something? No? Yeah. Salute. Grazie. Another word. Okay. So, you understood what I mean by uh, G1? Okay, you have an, uh, a good idea now how it works. G1 is the definition of the work package. Now, G2 outputs products results. These are tangible things, okay? Something you can really uh, physically, well, it's, it's not a good word because you can have this on a PDF form on the computer, but it's tangible things. 
Um, you have a bit here they, they ask you the, the number of the deliverable. At that point, what I suggest is uh, because you're very well organized, you're already thinking about how you're going to communicate with your uh, partners or with any kind of uh, people. And you want to, to be able to identify what you're talking about in an easy way and a fast way and a, a way you can remember easily. What's the best way to remember something easily is to link this something to um, another thing. So if you have, for example, work package number one, management, no. and if you prepare your first deliverable and you, you, you can see that sorry work package number number one so basically it's this is a suggestion it's not put it here Tell the evaluator you decided to call your management work package WP1. Well, if you're very, uh, you can say WP1M, management. It's, it's up to you. But identify your, uh, what you're talking about. So when you come here, uh, you were not uh, Francesca, right? You were... Alessandra, sorry about that. Alessandra, you were not here, but I mentioned uh, some codes such as WP, ATs, DVs, you remember? This is the code I use, DV for deliverable and AT for anticipated task. So here, instead of just putting one, because it's your first deliver, deliver, deliverable number, you can use another way of, you can eventually, um, for example, 1.1, work package one, deliverable one, or you can DV one, work package one. It's up to you. But you have to use some code to help you and help people to understand what you're talking about. So I have no specific uh, proposal to tell you at that point. You decide. You have to build your own uh, system. But you have to put a number, an identification, and it would be the first. Because you will copy this. If you have more than one deliverable in one work package, you just copy, like as I did before, and repeat it in, a, in the same sequence, OK? You put here your title. For example, um, a traditional, usual deliverable of management is uh, You have in your, um, in your uh, one of the tasks that you have to fulfill is to build a manual. If maybe for, the, for the, the, the first, the beginning of the project, where you will put all the information, how, to, um, how, it, how the management of the project is organized for your team and for you, because people can leave co uh, companies, people, I mean, you can change staff and all that stuff, so you, maybe you, you would be interested in, um, in uh, creating a procedure uh, guideline. Other uh, kind of deliverable can be uh, reports of meetings. Okay? 
you have, uh, for example, five or four meetings. One in the kickoff meeting in the country of the applicant, generally. Then you have a second meeting uh, in another partner country, etc. So you have a report at each meeting and it will be part of the management work package, for example. Okay, clear enough? Here, you have the dissemination level, which is public, restricted to, uh, with a limitation, and fully confidential. But even fully confidential, you have to know that EACEA, the agency, have access to everything. That's why they say here, confidential only for members of the consortium, including ESEA. What you don't want to share with everybody, you don't tell. Okay? If you don't want to share some things, just don't put a deliverable. So here you have also the nature of the deliverable. Oh, uh, uh, output is a kind of a, it's, it's an outcome. It's, it's the, the Oh, sorry. Well, here, it's basically, uh, you will say, you would put report here, and you would put here report on transnational. Okay? So, uh, let's say uh, a booklet or uh, I don't know a PDF file. The title uh, is something with uh, with uh, the description of what it is. Another example can be um, imagine that you are in a work package of dissemination. That would be website. Okay. This is an output. It's also a, a product. It's also a result. That's why you have the slashes. Output, product, and results covers every kind of uh, final thing. Okay, here you have a, a, some kind of a help, you know. You can see here the options. An event can be an output. So you will put, for example, the meetings. You will have a deliverable on the management work package, which will be meetings, five meetings, because it's an output. Don't create uh, 20 deliverable. Put all the same deliverable types together. Okay? Let's go back to It's a bit uh, dangerous to to show you example on projects because I don't want you to associate what you are going to, to see to what have to be done. It depends on the project, okay? But I'm trying to give you a practical idea of what we're talking about.
This is what we did, for example, on the, our planned project. Do you want to share, too? No, no. Just kidding. <laughs> um, any question, by the way, at this point? No? So, this is, for example, the work package number one that had been designed with the planned project with the title Project Management and Administration. It's a management work package. It started the first month of the project and it ended, it will end on the last month of the two year, two years project. Fair enough? This is not a tea house. This is, do you, any question? I'm, I'm here to answer. <laughs> is it another question of money? Please. Oh, so you I already have an Italian way of doing things. Okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Then you have the uh, description of the work package. And one of the first deliverable um, of the work package is a report, reporting tools for administrative and financial reporting. For example. Okay? These tools, well, they were uh, procedures, templates, paper uh, sheets that we could uh, use to fill in information, to report. Okay? The result I write the number of reports instead of that, so the description of my activity report instead of uh, the material, the nature of the. Uh, I'm sorry, but I couldn't hear very well. I couldn't understand. No, I can well. speak as well. So. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm asking if it uh, would be wrong in a uh, type of output and product uh, result to write. Uh, the number of activity report, of, um, so description of the activity well, report instead of the nature, because of the nature is asked uh, it's, after. It's, it's, it's not wrong to put in this, in this part things they ask here or it's not, it's not wrong. If you look at it, for example, this is a description of the, let's say, the, this, this, this first deliverable. But and just I mean, because it's, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite free. I mean, you just, the, the principle here is for you to make clear what you're talking about, what it is. Whatever the way you use, blue, white, yellow, be sure that what the person is going to read express, explain clearly what it is. Okay? Just to answer to the right question, uh, in, when uh, someone write, if I write uh, the, this kind of application, I would be sure to, write, to, to answer in the right way to the question. So that's why I, I ask it. Sure, okay. Uh, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't say that I have answers to all uh, questions, but one thing that uh, you would be sure that is um, you want to ex you want the um, the information you put it you will put there to express what they ask you to explain. It's really wide, but I have so many examples, but I think this one is uh, interesting. How to what type of output is it are you talking about? Well, it's a set of tools. Tools meaning 
within the description here. Okay? You, you remember, you, you have the title, you have the, the type of output, such as progress reports, templates, it's written here. And then you have a thousand characters to explain what it is. So even if you're not lucky enough to be clear enough here, you still have the chance to be, make it clear here. Okay? So here, since it's a set of things, I, I would pick this one too. But, well, in this case, just others. The nature of, 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 of this deliverable is a set of things. So I don't know if it's clear for you. Yeah? It's an example. I will show you other examples. Uh, you have here the, 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 ver the, the language you use to, to design these deliverables. Another uh, deliverable is the interim report, that is the uh, reports that you do in the middle during the process of the, of the, uh, the project. Let's go to another work package. Let's go to... For uh, transnational meetings, uh, we have to create uh, only one deliverable uh, with the, um, for a report of uh, transnational meetings, uh, only one de deliverable uh, referred uh, to all meetings? Well, I, I would answer, uh, in this project, we, we did one deliverable per meeting. You see here, deliverable for partner meeting one in Alicante. Deliverable five, partner meeting two. But personally, I don't know, I don't see any problem in uh, creating one deliverable for all meetings. For example, this is a good argument. You know, at this point, uh, unless I'm, I have two years of experience as an evaluator at the ESEA, it's difficult for me to answer because I don't see any problem in, in creating either uh, one deliverable for all meetings, but with, um, well, with a specific um, organization of the information. So you can have, for example, okay, one deliverable for all the transnational meetings, reports of the meetings. And in this information, you have identified meeting one, meeting two, meeting three, etc. But it's one deliverable. But if you choose to do like this, one deliverable per meeting, it would be possible for you, each time the meeting happened, to have the deliver deliverable ready at that moment. You see the difference? If you have one deliverable per meeting, well, in a chronolog chronological way, it means that you will have the, deliver the, the first deliverable here, the second here, and so on. That's, that's designing project. Yeah, I don't understand a thing. We have a deliverable for meetings and other deliverables for report me meetings report. No, it's it's if what if is you, the report of the meeting? Because in this case, in this case, as it's described here, you see partner meeting two. Okay, it was in Greece. They decided to be an event, but when you look at the um, description of the task of the work, their reports, evaluation, presentation of exploitation strategies, sharing experience on testing.
Are these meeting uh, before the project? Sorry? Oh, no. Are these um, meeting, meeting before, before, the, before project? the project? Oh, no, they are uh, during the project. They are in the project. Okay. Generally, you have what what you call well the project start. It starts generally with uh, creating a platform, creating a communication system, talk, preparing things. And at some point, you have what, what we used to call the kickoff. I don't like very much this word because kickoff means kickoff meeting. But it's uh, the first meeting. And just a little tip. Most of the reports and minutes and things that I've read during these years on the kickoff meeting, you have things that, like um, at this kickoff meeting, partners debated on the topic of what? Debate? I mean, have you been preparing things before? You've been debating already. At this kickoff meeting, for me, it's more putting in practice what you've been debating on or what you've been preparing. A kickoff meeting is, okay, we didn't meet, or if we meet, we, did, we didn't meet all of us, because for example, if the project I'm, I'm, I'm working on with uh, 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 my Italian, I consider my Italian partner, uh, part of us have met before the preparatory visit. But this kickoff meeting is important because some partners were not maybe in uh, the preparatory visit, and you need to have face-to-face, -face, you know, uh, residential uh, conversations and preparation. But before that, you have an agenda. You know exactly what you are going to do in your meeting. Come on, you you have prepared meetings before. I prepare an agenda before a Skype conference sometimes, most of the time. Sorry? Sorry, I need the micro, really. Maybe I'm tired and I can't hear you well, but... Uh, we used to call this kind of meeting, if I remember uh, well, stirring committee, something so... A start? Stirring committee, almeno. Yeah. Sorry? St St stirring committee, sure. Usually. Standing committee. Stir steering. Oh, steering, steering committee. Ah, steering ah, well. committee. It's the same. I have to say, I'm so practical. For me, it's the first meeting. No, just to first know if first. there is a particular lingua, a language that would be better to use than uh, another uh, on okay. the application. Why not? Up to you. I, I always, uh, well, this is me speaking to, again. I always try to use words and things that express exactly what it means. A cow is a cow, a, gat is a, a cat is a cat, water is water. First meeting is first meeting. Nobody can mistake first meeting with other meetings. So it's up to you. The buzzword in the European project thing is kickoff meeting. Okay. Is it a football party or something? I don't know. Anyway, you have an idea of what we, we mean. Let's go. Did I answer to your question? Is that Pia? Let's go to um, something completely different. Hmm. This is too easy. Work package number seven, exploitation. Okay, so exploitation. You see, you have a clear option. It starts at the fifth month and ends at the, uh, the last month, and it has a duration of uh, 20 months. And here, well, you have an uh, explanation of which uh, partner lead the work package. We will go. And we're just looking at example. We will go back to that. And deliverable number 20, because there have been a lot of deliverables until here. OK? This is, yeah, this is for you to understand that the deliverables works in orders. Actually, 
I'm not sure about that, but um, it makes sense eventually to number uh, the, the deliverables in a sequential way, from the first to the, the last. It's possible. Mm. I think it's perfectly okay to name your to number, to reset the number of the deliverables. I, I couldn't find any information on that, but uh, it's something better check all time. In this case, uh, so you have the exploitation, exploitation plan. Well, just one work package, so oh, uh, deliverable. Let me see uh, if uh, there is something more complete. Come on, let's go. I don't know if the right moment to do this question, but I have to. It's do. always the best uh, moment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, um, some difficulty to distinguish uh, from, uh, between uh, dissemination and exploitation. Well, dissemination is. is uh, um, Dissemination is telling, telling everybody what you're doing. For example, you, you would be uh, in, a, in a conference somewhere uh, that has nothing to do with your project, and you'll be contacting people at this conference, and you say, hey, by the way, this is a leaflet of the project we're doing, you're disseminating. Okay? Uh, dissemination uh, is a website where you publish your uh, whatever you're doing. Exploitation is putting in practice what is it you've been producing. It's, uh, it's, it's for example, if you design a, a training course, you have this training course here that you build, you send it to me, all the manuals, I come here, I come back, you train me, yes? I know how to do your training, and then I go to, back to Portugal, and I do the training, physically. I'm taking stock of what you've been doing, and I'm doing it in my country. This is exploitation. Dissemination is just call me, hey Bruno, we're doing this, we're doing that. Oh, fantastic. This is the difference. We can, we can describe in more ways, but to have a practical approach, this is the difference. All right? How is my clock? Three? Okay. Let's... Is that okay, the deliverable, the work packages? Yeah? More question? Oh, Italianos, they like to talk Italians. Deliverable in one word. So I know I can understand the way to fill in, but I can't, I can't understand what's a deliverable. What? Uh, um, when, when, you, when you do something in the project, generally we don't do something in the project just for nothing. Okay? So, a task would be linked to uh, an objective. And let's, uh, let's use an example. For example, um, I like to travel. So, my task is to go to Italy and to take pictures of the beautiful arch of Bitonto with a beautiful clock up there. Hmm? The deliverable of my task is the pictures. Uh, 
uh, uh, a newspaper on a travel agency, whatever, pays me, hey, go to Bitonto and take pictures of Bitonto because we would like to organize a, um, how you call that, um, excursion to Bitonto for my friends in Coimbra in Portugal. But they don't know Bitonto. What's, they Google Bitonto, it's a small town. In, but I think there is a heart in Bitonto. So they pay me, eh? and I go to Bitonte, I take pictures, I, uh, I make a movie, Vox Pop. Do you like Bitonto? No, not you. Oh, yeah, you like Bitonto. It's beautiful Bitonto. <laughs> I bring back the things with me, and I, make, uh, I, I build um, a kind of, a, for example, a, a little movie with my comments. And, and to make it simple, this is the deliverable. So this is an example of physical deliverable. So if my task is in this case is to go to Italy and the deliverable is to take the pictures. Yes. It's an end, end product. Another deliverable, which is more theori theori theoretical, more less practical, is my structured I'm, I'm, I'm keeping saying my, my, my. The structured network. You remember I'm a Brazilian, so I'm very proud. Not only Italians are proud. Okay, so all the tasks that I'm going to do will lead to a deliverable that I called SNET. 2.0, which is a web platform. When you go to SNET 2.0 of this project, you will be able to connect with my structured network. You, can, you will be able to use it also for your project. You have so many examples of that. Just, uh, just please forgive me. Uh, so, the... so just to make the difference, this is not this is not a physical thing in my hand. This is the pictures. These are the pictures. Even the pictures can be digital. This is a web site with information and with things that you can use from every place, any place in the world. This is a deliverable. This is the fin final result of my task defined by the objectives of this work package. So deliverable um, comes from deliver. OK? Sorry? It's an outcome. It's an outcome. It's an output. It's a result. That's why they use all these terms in this place. Because a product is a result, but a product can be uh, immaterial. Okay? This is a product. This is the result of research, design, production. But I can do the same thing that this thing do, does with an electronic whiteboard. Without this, I can. Okay. So, so it can never be uh, immaterial. So I can see the delivery is to reach um, the community or lots of people. It's not immaterial the deliver never. Well, it depends on. It depends. What I what I want to say is, it's the final result of what you've been doing. For example, salesmen, sales, sales people must deliver clients money. If I sell, I'm a, sell, I'm a salesman, I sell this. My end 
task. My result is 1,000 euro a month to my company. He said, deliver. I'm delivering clients. Delivering clients, making money. Okay? Clear enough? No? Yes? In this moment when we fill the, the form here, so we are planning to have these deliverables or we, we uh, already... Are you planning? Your project didn't start at this point. Yeah, okay. So we are planning. We will, we will uh, yes. do a meeting it's all, in, it's all planned. Yeah. in Bari and we will provide the website. We will provide a photo yeah. book. I don't know. Okay, you, you, whatever we're talking about here at the application level, you say you are going to do this. So when you come, the project starts, and when you come to the point that you said that you have this deliverable, you better produce it. You have it. Yeah. So you understand that at this point, the work plan is associated to a timetable to uh, activities and now we're going to start talking about that to money, to cost. So, when we are here in the application form, when we need, in this document, we uh, describe, ciao, we describe what are things. Okay, we explain what we are going to obtain and where we are going to obtain it. In this work package, in, in this work, work package of management I will obtain reports entering reports I will obtain uh, I will have uh, meetings which are events I will have this and I will have that in this work package and in this work package whatever I will have are deliverable the, re the re deliverables Hmm? At this point, you not saying nothing really specific on the when you are, but you will on the Excel table because there is a timetable. But also, somehow you're saying a bit when you are going to have this uh, information deliverable because you're saying that it will start at the first month and it will end at the ninth month. So it will take ninth month to make this work package happen. Okay? So that's why here, for example, you can say if you have the timetable etc. You can say that the management will start at the first month and end at the last one. And you can say that the dissemination uh, will start 
after one year and will end. You don't know exactly the, the details, but you have an idea when you're looking at it. Okay, I know that I have my work package here. But when you, when you write at this point the deliverable, you don't have a notion of time here. You have it only by the fact that it will be uh, end result. So, before going to this part, G3, let's be clear that you understand about the work packages and the deliverable. Is that clear for everyone? Okay. At this point, the deliverable is ready to, to use. That's the only notion you have here. That's what I wanted to say. And it's all right. Um, so it means that when you're designing the, the program, the, the project, you have your timetable detailed. Obviously, that's what I mean, OK? You don't have to share it with them at this point. So when you come to this part, this G3 is basically a first information that you're giving in this, in this part of the document on the costs that are the staff costs that are associated to the work package. Okay? You have more paper? Yeah? Here, you already know that the work package means things that will be done, tasks, activities, and it will give a deliverable. Okay? Which is the result. At this point, at G3, for sure, you have your own budget organization very well done. Not to say done. And that's why I said to you uh, yesterday, the other days, you don't start one thing and start the other thing and all that stuff. When you, at, you are at the initiation phase, you will go to the planning phase, and at the end of the planning phase, you have a plan. You have a budget, you have a work package, you have all the bunch of things ready. So the moment that you, you start using the application forms should be at the end of your planning programming activities. The deliverable of your activities initiating planning programming is the whole project ready to put in the applications of the EACEA forms right you can use you can use the Excel table from the EECA to organize your budget table, but it's not a very wise idea because it's organized according to, it's wiser to use your own way of planning and programming your projects. Do you use a software like uh, Microsoft Project Manager? Why not? 
Uh, do you use uh, Excel tables? Each, 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 each tab of the, my Excel table um, project building, each tab is a work package. And the last tab is the summarizing of all the work packages. That's how I work. Then I take the information from my way of doing things and I put it in the information of the, uh, in the form of the European uh, application. Are you following me? But the way you will do it is your way, the way you feel more comfortable to. But obviously you cannot, you cannot start filling the applications if you don't know what you're going to do. This is nonsense. You do it when you're late. But even when you're late, you do it because you have experience. Because if you have no experience in how it works, it's difficult to fill any application. You, you're going to, to go right to the wall, because you're going to start putting things, and it will not match. Because you don't have a connection between the Excel table and the, work, the Word document. Yes? There are, there are uh, uh, mistakes e easy to avoid because you can put, for example, on the Excel table that uh, uh, the work package will uh, start at month 1 and end at month uh, 24. But in the, in the MS Word document, you will write uh, 22. It doesn't fit. But when you cross-check, it's easy to find. But when, when your budget table starts being strong and no you you do your job you plan your 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 project then you start filling the form it doesn't it doesn't mean you never use the form you look at it you okay they ask this they ask that uh, maybe you didn't think about the exploitation uh, part in your project. Oh, they ask an exploitation information, so let's think about it. Is it exploitable? Can I ex uh, make my project exploitable? Yes, I can. So, well, what, what do they want me to write here? So, you use the forms, obviously, as, um, uh, as a support tool to build your project. Most of the projects that I design are structured my way. Because I don't know if I'm going to apply in a Grunvig multilateral or a Leonardo da Vinci uh, development of innovation, I don't know. Well, now there, is, there are good chances I know because um, I have some a little experience. But um, you design a project according to the basic rules of a project development. You then put the information of your project according to the organization of information that you, um, that you must do according to the action, the program that you selected. Okay? So at this point, you have a good idea for each work package which partner will be involved, what will be the role, the task of the partner within the work package, and how many days or how are the distribution of the staff according to their categories in this work package. Task at this point, is not made by machine, but by people. Uh, omega is my sign to say person, people. Don't ask me why. It's back from the engineering part, so I don't remember where I am. <clears throat> and these people obey to four different categories. And these people of different categories are part of 
different partners. So you know at this point that your work package number whatever will use either a manager, either a researcher, teacher, trainer, either a technical staff, Antonio is a good technical staff, and Marco too. And also the fourth category, will, which is an administrative person, person who would uh, deal with the computer uh, things. And at this point, you already know, also because your plan is very solid, that if it's, if it's, for example, work package number one, which is uh, management, and you are the applicant and you want to coordinate the work package number one, well, in this table, is it a good example here? Uh, no, let's go to the work package number one. So, I guess you can't see anything, but can you see more or less? You have what? You have, give me just a second, okay? Of, ah, my back, my back. If my doctor knew I was standing up so many times. Okay, lead partner, which is, the lead partner means the one who is leading, who is... So here, a country, short name. The short name is... Uh, that's why I don't agree sometimes with some document we can find. It should be here, for example... Uh, well, maybe they didn't use acronym here because to not to mistake with acronym of the project. Well, the short name in short name of the organization. Number of staff days and role and task of the work package, in the work package, all right? It means what is the partner going to do in this work package? All right, clear? It means the quantity of days the staff will be working on this work package. Oh, that was fast. That was very fast. Uh, subito. Mm. Okay. So, here, the lead, the lead partner, always the first. This is partner one from Finland. The organization name is OK Study. So, OK. They estimated that the manager of this work package, which is the management, is going to work 38 days in the whole two years on this work package. So it's not sequential. <laughs> if it's sequential, in 38 days, it's over. Uh, during the project, and for a quantity of 38 days, he will be involved directly in these activities. Uh, what do you mean? You decide who you want to put. Yeah, sure. If you want, uh, if 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 you want to put a, a trainer to manage. I think it's okay, no problem. If he got the skills too. Uh, where I, uh, have I to put it? The Sorry? name of category. I have to write this. The category no. one. Actually, the category as are, are, are here already. Yes. See? See, see, see. Here, you will put the number of day of the manager because category one. 
here the trainer, here the equipment, the technical, here the administrative stuff. Yes, exactly. We will see the... Uh, um, you're anticipating, I'm going to explain why. But the other day when I mentioned the, um, the guides, on the guides, you have the selling costs, I mean the uh, maximum, the subsistence cost according to the countries and all that stuff. So this is linked, that's right. So, but you're working on reality, you're building a plan on reality, not on, uh, based on the selling cost. You know that you will need the manager or don't. You don't put a researcher because the manager is too expensive. You have to know. If the project that you design is, uh, costs more money, a bigger budget than the budget allowed for this program, you on the wrong program. You have to go in bigger grants programs. Or you have to separate your project in two steps or three steps. Okay? Remember, at this point, you already have a good idea of how are the costs of your project, how your staff are distributed, and now you are putting the information on the application form. You're not discovering anything. You're discovering, yes, how to put the information in the application form. Okay? So, in this work package of management, uh, we decided to put no cost uh, uh, 12 days for the trainers of this organization and you see here 78 days for the administrative part because we understand that the uh, person who will be uh, responsible to write all the information and to build the minutes, the reports and all that stuff needs 78 days during two years to make all that. Not much, huh? Co-financing. Okay, why, why do we have also P2 from Greece, P3? Oh, why all these partners in the management work package also? There is one leader, which is P1, from Finland, but the other partners are also in the management. Well, the partners will also manage the project in their organization, right? At some point, uh, there's someone in, 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 you know, my, I was a consultant, I am consultant for Office Forma, and I will have, during two years, I have three days to manage my part of the management of the project linked to this work package. Do you understand? Okay. You are the applicant and you're managing the project. So you're managing the work package number one. Okay? What's your name? Miguel. Miguel. Told you, beautiful Italian. Okay, you are. I'm, I'm sorry, using uh, too much paper. Well, sorry about that. Can you see here? You're here and you're managing the project, meaning you're doing everything that you have to do to manage the project. So you're managing WP1 in this case. I'm here in Portugal and somehow I have to organize myself 
I will receive emails from you, I, have to, I will receive information from, from you because I'm doing my work package, which, which is work package number seven, which is dissemination. So we will interact, right? And at some point, I will have to build reports and I have to, be, I have to manage my activity. And I have to manage my activity beyond my only work package. I have to manage my activity also within the whole, the, the, the whole project, which is the whole management. So at one point, I will be doing tasks linked to the management of the project, which is not my work package, but I will assist, I will help you to manage the project. Managing the project means uh, organizing the works of your partners. It's not only organizing your work, it's organizing the work of the other partners. It's organizing the budget uh, allocation. It's organizing all that stuff. So we partners help you, assist you at some points, according to some uh, working plan, to manage the project. Okay? So, because of that, oh, and also, some partners might have a bigger responsibility on the management of the project than others. Say, say that uh, you, uh, you would like to use my management way of management of managing to manage the project. Imagine. Well, maybe you will have 34 days of management in your organization. And instead of giving me only three days of management, you will give me 15 days. Because there are a lot of tasks of the work package number one you want me to do for you. Yes? So, all the partners here, and I recommend that, are involved in the management of the project. It's not you alone. Okay, deal with your problems and your situation. Manage. I do my part, my dissemination. This one will do his uh, part, conception of the whatever it is he's doing. But you are the only one to assume management. We don't know. We don't even want to know how you're doing. No, we, it's not like this. We want to get involved with you in the management of the project and we support your work. So you give us some days to do that. And you see that some, some partners have 20 days. All, all the partners, I think, yes. You see, 239 days are for the management of the project. And it's distributed in, all, no, in the same category to all partners. 12 for Finland, 21 in the training category for Greece and so on. But this is an example. This is just for you to understand the logic. But you see that, for example, the 38 days of manager category, Finland is the only one to have such so many days. But for some reason in this project, Poland needed six days. I only have three days. Spain also have six days. Means that the, the work package one on the management of the project have some partners more involved than others. It's the way you build your project. What is important here is for you to understand that work package task partners. This is all together.
right? We have half an hour to finish the, the session today. No activity today. We can do it uh, tomorrow, maybe. So I don't know if at this point there is some doubt, some situation you would like to clarify. The micro? No, no, the micro. Microphone. I thought you called me Marco. So <laughs> what is oh, I wouldn't do this mistake. Come on. Well, uh, in the table we got uh, in the first table, the first column is uh, for the lead partner. No? The first on the left. Here. The, no, the previous. Lead partner. And what do I write in that, uh, in that column? Here. Ah, right. This, this, this row here, frankly, I think this is wrong, but I can't say uh, every 10 minutes this is wrong. It's like I'm very intelligent, and I think the guys at the EEC don't, don't. Well, it's, it's done like this. What I can tell you by experience, by feeling application, is well, there's nothing here to put, or there's. And you have. You have uh, the partners involved this way. We can, we can see maybe another one how it was done. Maybe it's me forgetting something. Nothing. Here, for example, they put P1, P11 in this column. You see here, I think it's just a forgotten task. See? This is the way to fill in, I guess. I think. The lead partner, partner, but it's a bit confusing, right? Because if you put P1 here, and what about the. I don't know. So, well. Uh, Here it's not. There's something we can check after that, but uh, I believe here you should be uh, you should use the same way. I fill my my part with the uh, information here, as the lead partner of the work package is partner eleven. That's the right way. And when, when you look at, at this table this way, it makes sense, right? But when, when you look at the second row, you also have lead partners in this work package. So at this point, we'll have to, for you to follow here, you have to go to the Excel table to make the connection. What, what's important for me to show you now is essentially this part. Okay? And you will understand actually, because I'm, tr I'm trying to make the connection with the Excel table for, for tomorrow, and you will see the connection. It's a bit difficult at this point. This, uh, this is the point of transition. What's important for you to understand now is that at each work package, you might have other partners or or all the partners involved. In this project, for example, almost all, uh, all work package, the partners were involved. For example, management, all the partners are involved because we will all manage the project. At the dissemination part, all the partners are involved because we all disseminate. But as some part of some work packages will be led only by one partner. And for example, if I have no competences, no skills in pedagogical education, it's normal that I'm not being involved in the conceptual work package of the project. And these are the categories. Sorry? These are the categories. No. no, it's not a category here. Um, 
it's a competence. If, if there, in this project there is a work package called conceptual concept of the method, learning method. Uh, the organization I'm representing in this uh, project have no competence in this field. It's normal that I have no staff involved in this work package. Okay, so at this point, in this table, you have what you call the input of the consortium staff, the total number of days per staff category should correspond with the information provided in the budget table. I want you to understand this here before the budget table because then it will be easier for you to understand the budget table. But you feel this, you, you start putting the information here with the budget. Okay? You have, you have the budget, yeah, you have the budget uh, ready, then you put what you put in the budget here. But this is for you to understand the logic when using the Excel table. Okay, um, we have 22 minutes to finish, so either uh, we have uh, more questions, which I think it's better because we don't have time to uh, prepare an activity, or we start an activity and we finish at five something, just kidding. It's obvious that at this point, you will have to, um, to look to, to the, the documentation, you will have to work a bit. I mean, at this point, it's important to start practicing, obviously, to, and to look at examples. All right? Well, the activity that I wanted to do with you today was to um, conceive, to create the part B2 of the uh, Adobe Acrobat form. You remember part B2? Description, a short description of the project? Abstract? Well, we can do that tomorrow or Friday, because Friday is a day that I will organize a going to what you think it would be important. I'm, I'm, obvious, I'm quite sure that Friday we will be talking about numbers. I have this feeling. But um, I will, I will, uh, I will um, organize Friday according to what best answer to what you need to know. Instead of giving you more information, maybe it's better to go back to the process. All right? Grazie mille. No question? No questions? Just to repeat something on the work package, I mean, um, I'm not sure to understand how to use that uh, part of the application uh, referring to the, um, the part below, you know? This part, this, this part so, of the application? Uh, I, I can't understand how to use as well, I mean, uh, in the page, uh, page um, the part below this, si dice così nelle parti prima di questa? The previous part of this, you know, everything is clear uh, as well. Eh, vabbè. Uh, the work package. You have the situation of the work packages, right? The uh, work packages. Uh, so, but what what is it you want to want me better clarified in? Um, Possible. What is the work plan? No, it can be a so question. Uh, so why? I'm not clear. Repeat, excuse me. 
Oh, sure, that's the question, okay. Okay, well, let's say, should I use a very simple example or you prefer a project example? I'm looking for Bitonto. <laughs> Bitonto. I'm going to be Tonto. The, my project is going to be Tonto to make a, a reportage, um, um, a, a touristic uh, movie on Bitonto. So I can go back to Portugal, show the movie to my, my potential clients, and they, oh, we have to go to Bitonto. <laughs> and I make money with the, the process. Okay. So. Um, one work package is so uh, the project. So uh, please forgive me. Uh, I wanted to be clear because we don't have much time. So uh, the right question maybe. Uh, I have to tra uh, transform the um, description uh, of the activity. What uh, the application? What I wrote in the, appli in the, in the application before the G, uh, J2. I'm sorry, but I can't. So follow you. Okay. Which part? Part D. Till here it's uh, quite clear what I have to do. So till F. When I pass to part G, I think I have to transform um, what I wrote till the part F. Maybe una sintesi, cioè come che si dice? Oh, I didn't, I didn't uh, talk about part F because part F. No, not the part F, all the, the previous part. The D1 and all that stuff? I can remember the. the, the you have D, description of the project. Okay, so I've got the e, description. The, the impact and, and dissemination. All of this information I have to put into part uh, into the work package. Work package. Uh, so how can uh, what's the difference? How well, can I pass from the, that's the question. When when you manage a project, actually you um, well the way I do it is I start thinking about the tasks. What will I have to do for this project to to be. I will have to define all the tasks and some tasks are part, bye -bye, are part of the same type of activity. For example, management is management. Uh, design of an idea is a design of an idea. So these are my first, my first uh, Brainstorming. So what you're asking have nothing to do with European project, but yes, project building. So you know that to go from A to B, you have tasks. So, well, at the initi initiating phase, I can use that. At these phases of the project, I will start to break down the project in tasks, in results, okay, activities, deliverables.
So I'm, I'm going to start to organize things. I know that I'll have to start with, with knowing how, are going to, how are, am I, I am going to make things happen. It's management. So I start thinking, okay, how am I going to, to manage this? Will I use uh, someone for the project from the beginning to the end? How am, how am I organizing this? So first you, you have some kind of a, a organi or, okay. It's all also called a mind map. Uh, you know, you know, you see how things are going to work. Yeah. So at one point, you know that uh, to be in Bitonto, to take pictures, things will have to happen here. You'll have to organize your trip. You'll have to contact uh, people from different places that you are going to visit to take pictures. You have to organize activities. So you start building your activities. And you know that there are some activities you will have to do at some point. Yeah, but D1 is literature. It's literature. You're writing what's going to happen. G is literature, but practical literature. You're explaining what is going... Well, it's... it's, it's in D1, you're, you're uh, explaining things in, in a generic, uh, wide way. Here, you're explaining things on a practical way. Obviously, yeah, I think I have a slide on that, I'm not sure, but D1, 2, 2, 5, and E, all this is G. But what, what you have to do is to separate the things to explain clearly what is going to be. So, a, 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 work, a, work plan, a work plan is a practical uh, image, picture of what you've been talking about. Something still escaping from, from my comprehension. What's uh, uh, the division between categories? No? What is what? Yeah, we got the differences between the categories, which refers to the hours. Uh, I want to know where I can refer this category in the, pre in the previous part of the, of the document. This is not in the application. This is on the guides. Guides part one, guides, guide part two, A to B. And I believe, it's, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's in part two, one, part one. I'm not... So many docu documents, I'm never sure, but I can show you right now. Um, I know that it's, I know that it's, it's table, table, 5A, but I can't... S
Well, I can find it on the guides when you go to when you use the um, budget table, the budget table of the uh, application. At the, at the end of the budget table, you have sellings, what they call sellings. It's a maximum, uh, the top uh, amount that you can consider for the staff. And you have explained here. I don't know if it's very, it's visible. Can you see here? Okay. When you, you go here to Italy, for Italy, uh, obviously they didn't use the, so you can't see if it's A, B, C. You know, let's take the example of Bulgaria. Bulgaria, they consider that the maximum amount per day you can give to a manager is 67 euros. Here. Maximum for a researcher, teacher, or trainer, 60. So it means if, if, if you, you know that you will use um, a teacher or a trainer for 10 days during your project, it will cost you 600 euros. Is this a way to make the, pro the projects uh, um, spread in different countries, you know? So I can take a, a technician or a, a manager from a, an abroad country in order to pay it less? Is it due to this? You can, you can organize, you must organize your uh, project in the most cost-effective way. But of course, um, okay, I'm in, I'm in Norway, and uh, the cost of a manager in Norway is 440 euro, it's very expensive, and I'm thinking, hmm, uh, the country who the partner who will manage the my project will be a Bulgarian because it's less money I ah, you can think of it but maybe you can think also you want to manage the projects you are apply, applying you understand but what you can do if for example I mean management is management but eventually, you can work with a Romanian partner on the technical aspects or on other aspects, because in Romania, some costs are uh, more um, um, affordable than in Norway. It's up to you to organize your project, but you're organizing your project according to real things, not according to... So, Yes, you can build your project first with a realistically, perfectly realistic version, and then you can analyze the possibility to save costs and to be more cost effective. So yes, you can, you can give to a partner uh, a specific work package because of a cost reason, because of a cost situation, because it would be too expensive. Uh, for example, I give you another example. Sometimes in some countries, subcontracting translation is cheaper than in your country. So you can subcontract. You can ask the partner where the country, in the country where the, the subcontracting translation is cheaper and good quality instead, instead of doing here. But be pertinent. Be sure about what you're doing. Don't, don't organize your... Uh, project because of costs and you I mean it's like uh, buying something in the Chinese shop you know you, you expect some trouble sometime no offense to any country 
the lead, the, the main ma management is the lead, the partner and the, the, the one who go finance the co-finance the project usually, isn't it? You will see in the budget tables that the co-financement is uh, shared between partners. It's not the applicant that have to put 25% of his pocket to the project. It's all of us. It's all the partners. So if you apply for a project of 400,000 euros, you expect 300,000 euros from the European European uh, Commission, be sure that the, the whole partnership will be able to provide uh, 100,000, which is, uh, well, if it's uh, five partners, you make the account, 20,000 each. This is a Grunvig multilateral project co-financed by the European Union. I heard situation, situations on these 25 persons, but I don't think this is the place to address that, uh, uh, that part. 25 percent of the project you will have to find um, financing. You can co-finance it with another grant if it's eligible, eventually. You have, you have a part, you will see tomorrow, a part which is the uh, indirect costs of 7% that are eligible costs that you, have, you can consider. But don't choose a Grunvig multilateral project if you don't have the finance to... Like I said yesterday, my organization is only partner and at the small scale dimension on Grunvig multilateral for now. It's too soon for us to have, we don't have the um, financial capacities because we are working with real costs and with real tasks and with real deliverables and with real needs. There are some projects I would like to build. <laughs> I can't because it's too expensive. So tomorrow you will see the uh, connection between um, the application form and the uh, Excel table. Before start, starting with the Excel table tomorrow, I will give, uh, I think it should be interesting to, to give us some time to maybe uh, review a bit some doubts, some questions that you would like to clarify before going to the table. Before using the table. Yes? So, again, thank you very much. Grazie mille. Ginada, for your patience and for your interest, your capacity, everything. And the words you gave me today. Che ora è? Che ora è? Things like that. No, no, I'm just saying uh, that's it. Thank you very much.